Hi, my name is Wayne Botha. In this video, you will learn how to successfully lead projects to meet the CMS pricing transparency mandate signed into law in October 2020. I have led multi-year programs in the healthcare industry to meet CMS mandates and share my experience with you here to make your project successful and make you a hero. I'm specifically avoiding agile terms in this video because my approach makes you successful regardless of the methodology. Let's get into it. First, we have to define program success. Answer the question, how will you know the program is successful in your organization? Let's look at the dates your organization has to meet and then dive into the deliverables. I will help you explore this mandate so that you can ask better questions of your project team. You need to explore these questions with your business experts, architects, executive sponsors, and BAs to get answers and cover your bases. By 1-1-2022, healthcare insurance carriers must provide machine-readable files. This has got three parts to it. Part A, this includes in-network provider prices, which brings up questions that require further clarification. For example, what is the list of in-network providers and where is that list coming from? Is there a date for in-network providers? For example, if a provider joins the network in December, what is the requirement to report that provider's pricing? What is the requirement for a price? For example, if the price changed last week, what is acceptable to meet the CMS mandate? Part B is around out-of-network provider prices or alternatively, what the provider charged in the past if the price isn't available. Here are questions you must ask regarding this point. For out-of-network providers, what questions must we explore to get consensus on the right price? Where will the price come from? Is any validation or confirmation needed that we have the correct price if there's any discrepancies? Now, Part C covers prescription drug prices or historical prices if the current price isn't available. Here are questions that you should ask your team regarding this point. What is the final price that you will provide? Are there any concerns around geographic location, such as if the price in Boston is different from the price for a drug in Dallas? For all of the work in 2021, you need to investigate and lay out the dependencies. What system must provide data and be ready for testing before the dependent system can consume the data. Right, let's move on then to the deliverables that are due on 1-1-2023 and 1-1-2024. These two deliverables are interrelated. So by 1-1-2023, you need to provide an online shopping tool for 500 of the most shoppable items and services. The ambiguity that jumps out to me regarding this requirement is instantly what are those 500 most shoppable items and services? Is there a list of the 500 somewhere that they are defined? Who has got the list? And is there an industry accepted agreement around the list of items and services that need to be in the online shopping tool? What exactly are the requirements for this tool? Must it be on smartphones, on websites? These are questions to be investigated with the architects and documented. The 1-1-2024 requirement is to expand the online shopping tool for the costs of all remaining procedures, drugs, and any other service. However, I will focus on the work to be done in 2021 in this video, and you can use my thinking for the subsequent years as well. For the work to be done in 2021 and reach the 1-1-2022 deliverable, here is a starting point. Initially, you must get the program established, which includes confirming the scope of work and identifying the teams to do the work. Then, the code must be delivered, tested, and deployed. This is not strictly sequential, and there may be subcomponents of code that can be developed and tested early and then deployed into production. And speaking of which, try to avoid the Big Bang approach if you can. By putting smaller pieces of code into production during the year, so that you can make incremental changes to production systems and catch defects earlier. My approach is to look at the big picture, document what is already known and likely to occur, and then expand on the details as more information becomes available during the program. 
I lay this big picture plan out from the end game, working backwards from the 1-1-2022 deadline. Let's talk high level about the plan. During February and March, you need to establish and refine the program for this year. During the May to July timeframe, your teams must develop new code and enhance existing systems to provide the source data. You'll also need to conduct modular testing during this period. Around the August to October timeframe is when the program will really heat up because you have to get ready for deployment. And also bear in mind that in the summer months, many people take vacations. A few things happen around the end of the year that could impact your program. Firstly, we have the Thanksgiving break. Many people take time off during the holidays and work often slows down. Secondly, there is a blackout period from mid-December to early January when you cannot do regular production releases of your software. Thirdly, you might need to consider annual enrollment period, which could impact your systems. And after the go live in January, there will be support needed. There might be defects in the code or there might have been misunderstood requirements that will only surface in the production environment. You must allocate resources for January 2022 to address any fallout and possibly implement additional production code releases. You need to lay out a program responsibility structure so that you can easily communicate everyone's role in the program. This will become an important communication tool in the future. Too many times I've seen programs where everyone assumes they know what everyone's role is, but many people don't know exactly how they fit in. Clarifying this program responsibility structure helps you to define the status reporting for your program and also drives how you structure your executive update meetings. Let's talk about program leadership. I think anyone can manage a project, but it takes experience, effort and skill to lead a program. I have found that I get the best results when I make the time to build relationships with executive sponsors, business partners and team leads. You need to look weeks and months ahead as the program leader. For example, I like to send out a concise weekly email that communicates the highlights of the plan for the coming week. You need to proactively report the status, upcoming milestones and planned work to your executive leaders. Let's talk about risks that you can expect to occur. I have years of experience on leading multi-year programs and have seen these risks become issues many times. You can be sure that these risks will appear on your program and you must have plans in place to mitigate them. Number one, team turnover. You will have team members leave and new members join your program. How will you keep the knowledge in shared locations and be prepared for knowledge transfer as needed? Number two, forgetfulness. You need a decision log for the major decisions made on the program. You also need BAs and architects and other team leads to maintain a decision log because people will forget the results of decisions and you will end up discussing the same decisions over and over again. Number three, during the life of your program and when testing is underway, you are likely to uncover defects in the systems already in production. The source data might be incomplete or inaccurate, or you might have conflicting data, such as two different prices for the same service, depending on where the source data comes from. How will you deal with this when you uncover defects in existing production systems? This leads into the next point, which is scope creep. So point number four. Developers and app owners will see opportunities to make small enhancements to existing software while working on this CMS mandate. You will have to manage the scope creep. Otherwise, your budget will expand with work that does not have anything to do with the CMS mandate. I led a corporate program where we adopted the mantra of what is will be. In other words, if a system isn't working correctly now, then this CMS mandate is not a reason to fix an existing production system. Point number five, what will you do if the CMS postpones dates or changes the requirements? This happened when I was working on the ICD-10 program and you must be ready for this. How will you react if the CMS dates are postponed by six months? One option is to have software in production with the new features turned off so that you can make small production changes to implement the switch to turn the software feature on. Now, let's wrap up this video. 
The keys to successfully leading programs to meet the CMS pricing transparency mandate are proactive leadership, swift responses to issues that you encounter, and keeping a sense of humor. Thank you for your time. I trust that this video helps you to be a hero.